Mikhail, hi. Uh, congratulations on your appointment. Tell us what it means to you to be back at this club. Um, how big a challenge it is for you. I feel back home. I'm extremely happy and proud to have given the opportunity to to be the manager of this football club. Um, I've been preparing for a few years for this challenge to come. I know the expectations, I know the level, and I know the stature of this club and what it deserves. So I'm ready for that challenge. I can't wait to start working with the players and everybody here at the club. But um, I've got a good vibe. I'm sensing a good energy today since I walk in a London colony. So it's giving me even more energy and I feel so happy. I can't say any, any other thing. How did it feel walking back in here? How did it feel walking back in at the training ground at, at London Colney? Yeah, it was strange. Just living four or five years ago, obviously in a different role, in a different position. But uh, it was always a dream for me. The day I left and I made the decision to leave this football club, I said to the people that uh, I'm going outside, I'm going to learn, I'm going to get prepared, and hopefully one day I can come back here when I feel that I'm ready to make that step. I have so much respect for this football club that if I wouldn't feel that I'm ready and prepared for this, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair. What, what's top of your list? What, what, what's your priority? The first thing is a little bit to change the energy. I feel last week I was here uh, with Manchester City and I was a little bit down after the game when I felt what was going on. So we have to try to engage everybody. I have to try to try convince the players what I want to do, how I want to do it. They have to start accepting a different process, a different way of thinking. And I want to get all the staff and everybody at the club with the same mindset. You know, we have to build a culture that has to sustain the rest. If we don't have the right culture, the difficult moments, the tree is going to shake. So my job is to convince everybody this is how we're going to live. And if you are going to be part of this organization, it has to be in these terms and in this way. And after that, we can talk about other things. And obviously now we need immediate impact. We need to start winning games. We need to start to raise the level of confidence of the players. And finally, we need the fans. We need to engage them. We need to be able to transmit with our behaviors, our intention, what we want to bring to this football club. And I think that's the only way where if we give them, they will give us a little bit and suddenly we'll have to feel that connection because we need to plug these two things together. This is so powerful. I've been outside this football club and when you are outside, you look at it and you say, wow, this is massive, you know? So this is how I'm feeling. There's so much to do. I'm so excited. I think we have the right team. I had many conversations with all the senior people at the club. I feel Josh and Stan in the same path, so I have a good feeling. Do you feel that the club has lost its way a little bit, lost a bit of its identity since you were a player? That's, that's what I'm sensing from the outside. I would like to start to make some steps and I start to understand the reasons why. I'm seeing there are reasons behind it. It will be a history behind it, and I have to try to understand quickly why this is, to implement certain things that will be quick wins for the players, the staff, and everybody. And um, I think that's the challenge now. We don't have much time to train, much time to stay talking about all the things because there are some important games coming up. But um, we have to create the right vibe, you know, the energy and everybody at the organization has to feel so privileged to be here. It's, it's no other way. You've been with Pep Guardiola for, what, just over three years, three and a half yeah. years. What, what have you learned from, from him? And I don't know, what advice has he given you as you <laughs> become a boss for the first time? Advice? Uh, what did you say? What, what, I've, what I've learned mostly is that you have to be ruthless and you have to be consistent and you have to fit every day the culture of the club to create a winning mentality. And to sustain it is even harder. So every day is important. Every act is important. Every word of the organization is important. His war rate is incredible. Um, how inspirational is to people is incredible. But for me, the secret is that the people and players and the staff have to believe what you're trying to deliver, 
you have to able to transmit it and people will buy into that. And when they do that, then you are a team, everybody's together and united, we will be strong. I've been speaking to, to one or two Arsenal fans uh, and, and they all wish you well, mm -hmm. but some of them are a little concerned that this is your first step into, into management. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? That I completely understand their concerns. That's the only thing I can say. But I will try to convince them that uh, that I'm prepared, that I wouldn't be sitting here if I honestly don't feel that I'm prepared to take this responsibility and that I will burn every drop of blood for this football club to make it better. How close did you come to getting the job 18 months ago? Do you know? A little bit close. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Were you off the picture? It wasn't the right time. When things doesn't happen is because it wasn't the right time. The right time came now and, and I'm glad. I learned a lot from that experience as well. It was great to be part of a process of that nature. And, uh, and I was better prepared for this one. And I think it helped. And it was a very positive thing to happen. That's it. Um, you gave a very emotional goodbye to this club um, mm. as a player. Mm. Just tell us a little bit more. You touched on it. Just tell us a little bit more about what this club actually means to you. Well, when I was playing in England, um, I started to realize what Arsenal meant. Um, obviously, I was born in Barcelona, and the club that had more similar style, more similar values and vision, it was Arsenal. So I always talk to the people around me that I had a dream and it was to play for this football club. And it was one man, his name is Arsene Wenger, that believed in me and gave me the opportunity to play for this club. And after that, he made me captain of this football club and I wouldn't be sitting here if he couldn't have the vision to, to give me the opportunity to enjoy this incredible club. You said um, I must try and convince the players Mm -hmm. So, what has been going wrong in the last 18 months that you think has fundamentally changed the way they think? Well, I have my ideas that I would like to keep uh, for myself because I have to corroborate them when, when I see them act, when I see them behave, when I see them live together. Um, I want to do things my way by convincing them that it's the right way for everybody to live better. Um, Everybody has to respect each other first of all, and I want people who is accountable for what I'm asking him to do. I don't want people hiding, I want people to take responsibility for the jobs, and I want people who delivers passion and energy to the football club. Every, anyone who doesn't buy into this, that it has a negative effect or whatever, is not good enough for this environment and this culture. So. There are things to change, absolutely, because they're not performing at the level that we expect them to. But we have to help them. And to help them, I need to know what's happening. I need to understand them how they're feeling, what they're lacking, you know? If I get to reach that point, then I can help them. And then they will trust me, and then they will follow me. One more. You're now the youngest manager in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. What's more important, passion or experience? Time will tell. To talk about experience, uh, experience on a job, a job has a lot of roles and responsibilities. Some of them I was doing them in my previous job and some others not. But most of them are linked and there are things that you, ha you do have or you don't have. Um, the experience bit, I can't touch it. It's completely against me, you know. The good thing is I feel young, you know. When I was playing at 34, I was always the oldest and now as a manager I'm the youngest. So it has a lot of... <coughs> Positive things uh, as well on that, um, but I know it's uh, it's what it is. I have to adapt to the job. Um, I want to have, and I have a lot of good people around me to support me. You know, and we will try our best. Okay, welcome, right. um, Mr. Ozil. Of course, a player you played with. He's welcomed your appointment. Has he been displaying enough energy? Has he got a future? in this club under your identity? He is a massive player for this football club. You know, and as I said before, what I want is I want to understand how they are feeling and what they need. You know, it's not so much about what I need, about uh, you have to understand them. 
Because sometimes we just, with conversation, you get to understand a point, you know? And when you understand them, I can take the excuses out of them and focus in the things that are relevant and have an impact for the team on the pitch and off the pitch, you know? But of course, he's a massive player. I work with him and I know when, when he ticks, what I can bring to the team, you know? So it's my job to get the best out of him, of course. In terms of the squad and mm -hmm. the quality you have in there, do you think they've been reaching their potential? How much do you expect to go into the transfer window in general? We haven't discussed the transfer windows and obviously there are a lot of conversations to have around that. I'm only concerned about trying to win football games right now and finding a way to improve little things that bring them confidence, you know, to step on that football pitch and improve better than what they've been doing. Mikhail, what do you think Arsenal can achieve for the rest of this season? I think to set targets at the moment is not what I would like to do. I would like to take it uh, day by day. We have a lot of things to do. What is clear is the ambition of this football club are very clear. You have to be in Europe, you have to fight for trophies, and the rest is not good enough. It's as simple as this. But now to talk about this is a little bit far. I would like to talk about what we're going to be doing tomorrow in the game, Win on the game, leave the moral of the team, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, go to Bournemouth, and start doing it again. And what sort of role do you expect Freddie Lindbergh to play moving forward? It's a conversation I, I was with him this morning uh, when we addressed the players and we spoke to them. Uh, I have a conversation with him afterwards to see his expectations and how I see the situation, and uh, we will know something after that. I haven't had the chance to speak to him first. Which is fine. What was Pep Guardiola's reaction when you left the club? Listen, the relationship between me and me, it's incredibly good, you know. Obviously, he was sad and the timing wasn't the best, you know, for, for him. But uh, he understood. He, he knows how I've been growing and the, the needs that I had emotionally, the ambitions that I had. And he kept giving me more and more and more over the years. If I had admiration for him before, after working with him, I could not explain how a nice person he is and what a professional he is. The way he reacted with me looking at my eyes, he knew that I was suffering because I was feeling I was leaving him in a moment where obviously they need me a little bit as well. So I felt in that sense a little bit sad, you know, but He's been so supportive, the same as Chiki, as Ferran and Kaldun. I was on the phone with him yesterday. So the terms that we left the relationship in, it could not be any better. You know, I say goodbye yesterday to all the staff at the training ground, all the players. I cried, you know, because they've been my family for three and a half years. And we had incredible moments. We had a dream to do something in England with Pep that people say, ah, you cannot do it, it's impossible, the Premier League, they will, you will get bullied. And we did it in the way we believed we could do it, you know, and that's so fulfilling. And we share that feeling for the rest of our lives, the moment that we live together. Just a couple more, David. Mikhail, David Ornstein from The Athletic. Many people feel that your potential is so good within football, people at City included, that you didn't need to make this move now, that the opportunities would continue to come your way at Arsenal and other clubs in the years to follow. Why did you therefore think this was the right time, given that the City project is ongoing and your career is flourishing? Because sometimes in this industry you can have a plan and you can have an idea or a way to develop the best possible way. And there the emotions get involved. And when Arsenal knocks, in any door, it's difficult to say no. When he knocks in my door and he touches my heart, it makes it very, very difficult. So it was a very difficult decision, it's true. But, um, but as well, I felt that the club needed someone to appoint. I saw and they transmit that they were so convinced that they want me to go with me that I said, I have to take the challenge. How soon will we see your coaching team announced? Uh, that's not in my hands, the lawyers, and they're doing the perfect work all together. I would like to do that as quick as possible, but to be fair, the time scale is being hectic. I had games when I was at City, so there is a lot of things that had to be done, but uh, it will be announced very, very shortly. Last one, Jerry. Mikel, I appreciate you weren't seeing this, but Freddie has just tweeted that he's excited to work with you. Are mm -hmm. you able to confirm 
in what capacity uh, Freddie Youngberg will be staying on if he is indeed staying on? No, like I said to, to him before, I need to sit down and have a proper conversation. I didn't believe that today was the day just before traveling to speak to Freddie for 10 minutes because I might need to speak with him for eight hours to really explain me the situation, what his aims are, what he's seen from the players, and understand the history of what happens in the last 18 months at the club. So we will sit down, we will grab a coffee or, or a bowl of coffee, I don't know, and, and then we will make the decision. Have you spoken to him about the plans for tomorrow's game? No, I just said, you know, you know them, you've been training with them, do what you feel. I tell them a little bit what I wanted from them, and, and that's it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you.